thing that I set out to test in this research project and in this book is minimal historicity, which is the idea that Jesus was just an ordinary guy, maybe a charismatic guru or something who, who inspired people to start a religion, kind of what most secular historians think actually happened, and that's a plausible theory for the origins of Christianity. To test that theory against the, an alternative theory, which is that Jesus began life or began his existence as an imagined character, basically someone that people believed they were communicating with through revelations. Um, and then only later was he transposed into history and turned into a historical man. So I'm comparing these two hypotheses. Now to give you an idea of the analogy of how this makes sense in terms of the history of religions, we can look at Islam as a model. For example, Muhammad claimed to have conversations with the angel Gabriel and the Quran is not the teachings of Muhammad, according to the teachings of, of Islam. Uh, according to that, according to their religion, the Quran records the teachings of Gabriel, right? So the actual, quote-unquote, historical founder of Islam is the angel Gabriel, and uh, Muhammad is just playing the role of the apostle, right? Uh, he's like the apostle Peter, the apostle Paul. This is Dr. Doby. I've got to make a strong correction on that statement by Richard Carrier, that the angel Gabriel founded the religion of Islam. A vast supermajority of Muslims will tell you that the Quran came from God. God, Allah, the one true God, had the Quran from the beginning, or he created it. Then he gave it to the angel Gabriel to communicate the message to the prophet Muhammad. And it was the prophet Muhammad that recited the Quran to humanity. So many Muslims may be offended by the idea that Gabriel founded their religion. They will tell you, no, God founded our religion. And I wanted to make that correction. The Quran originated from God, was given to Gabriel, and then to Muhammad. But that does not negate the fact that archangels communicate with people in many religions, including the religion of Islam, and that fact is important, as Richard Carrier will show you right here. We can look at Islam as a model, for example. Muhammad claimed to have conversations with the angel Gabriel, and the Quran is not the teachings of Muhammad, according to the teachings of Islam. Uh, according to that, According to their religion, the Quran records the teachings of Gabriel, right? So the actual, quote-unquote, historical founder of Islam is the angel Gabriel, and uh, Muhammad is just playing the role of the apostle, right? So when you look at the actual claims being made by the origins of the religion, their religious founder was a non-existent person, because, you know, the angel Gabriel is not a historical existent person. So similarly, uh, we have Joseph Smith from Mormonism did something similar, claimed all his teachings came from the angel Moroni. So really the actual founder of Mormonism is the angel Moroni, another non-existent person. And Joseph Smith isn't really the founder, quote-unquote, he's just the apostle. Um, now, of course, from our perspective, uh, being this is an Atheist United meeting, from our perspective as atheists, yes, Joseph Smith really is the founder, and Muhammad really is the founder of, of those religions. Um, they were just claiming to have these teachings from this cosmic being who was communicating with them. The proposal here, the, the alternative explanation for the origins of Christianity, is that this is what the Christians were originally teaching too. So in this sense, Jesus was originally a celestial being like Gabriel or Moroni and taught his followers in the same way, or was said to have done so. And then he was what's called euhemerized. This word euhemerization, it's named after the Greek author Euhemerus, who wrote in the 3rd or 4th century BC. And he started this trend, uh, which is why it got named after him, where he took Zeus and Uranus, these celestial deities, and turned them into historical persons, put them in history, and said that, no, they were actually past human kings who were deified later. Now, of course, that didn't really happen. That's not the actual historical sequence of where Zeus and Uranus came from. But he invented this idea that they were these past historical persons, and you could write biographies about them which he called the sacred scripture, uh, ironically enough for us. But then this caught on. Uh, so lots of other deities who were celestial deities or gods who existed in supernatural realms or mythic realms were converted into historical persons and given biographies placed in history in a particular place in time, interacting with historical people. This trend is called euhemerization, and it was popular within the Mediterranean. A lot of gods uh, were undergoing the same process. And then the theory would go that certain sects of Christianity uh, started believing or selling those stories as true. And of course, that's then uh, the sect that became dominant, politically dominant in the 4th century and in the Middle Ages, and then decided which documents would survive for us to see and what condition they would survive in. Two reasons they would do this. Uh, one is, like I just noted, euhemerization was common. It was fashionable. So you would expect it to happen the same way it happened to all these other religions. 
But another one, uh, and this is proposed by religious studies professor Kurt Knoll, uh, is that it was easier to control doctrine if you did this. Uh, when you look at the epistles of Paul, what you have are these apostles going around having visions of Jesus, giving them instructions. And Paul's this outsider who had a vision from Jesus and therefore was appointed as an apostle that way. And then goes around saying, hey, Jesus came to me and he said he changed his mind about some stuff. Obviously, this starts to become a problem. And you can see in the epistles there was tension between him and the other apostles. Um, there are certain obvious reasons why they would let him in because he was leading a much more successful church and there was money involved. But uh, that's a whole other argument. But the significance here is you really want to shut this down. You can't just have any Joe Blow coming in and say, hey, Jesus came to me and he changed his mind. Uh, so one way to shut that down, or at least to attempt to, is to invent a historical character and say that your leaders uh, were taught by people who sat at the feet of this guy, that you have a tradition that can be traced back to him. And so no one can come along and say, hey, he came to me in a vision. They go, you don't have a pedigree. Visions don't count anymore. The significance is, is that indeed visions didn't count anymore by the end of the second century. You have the example of Montanism, uh, one of the Christian sects, uh, heresies supposedly, uh, was very vision-based, but it was one of the things that got suppressed and rejected by the Orthodox sect uh, that... Uh, arose after and or uh, was developing at the same time and then became dominant. So we know the sects that were choosing this path to create a historical character and invent a tradition to shut out the revelators. Uh, we know that was the church that succeeded and we know they were competing against churches that were more revelatory based. Jesus began life or began his existence as an imagined character, basically someone that people believed they were communicating with through revelations. Um, and then only later was he transposed into history and turned into a historical man. So I'm comparing these two hypotheses. So according to Richard Carrier, Jesus was not an historical person, not a man, but an archangel that communicated with people in their minds. He was euhemerized later, named after the Greek author Euhemerus. To be euhemerized means you are made into a historical person later on, even though at the beginning you were not. And that is the theory of Richard Carrier. And that is why he believes that Jesus was not a man, but an archangel. And I'm going to be investigating that idea in future videos. So please subscribe and click the bell. Peace.